Hello friends, this video on matrices part 34 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 33. Having understood uh, the operation, let's now take invertible matrices because we will use operations for invertible matrices also. A square matrix is said to be an invertible matrix if there exists another square matrix of the same order such that AB into BA is equal to BA in is equal to I. Then B is called inverse of A. It is denoted by A inverse. Please note if AB is equal to I, that is not the only condition. AB has to be equal to BA and equal to I. Because AB is equal to BA is not necessarily a true condition. So for an inverse to exist, for a square matrix A, please note it is only for square matrix. There, there exists a square matrix B of the same order such that AB into AB is equal to B is equal to I, and we call A is a invertible matrix. So please note something: a rectangular matrix cannot have a inverse because I told it's only for square matrix, and also. If in rectangle matrix, maybe the BA and AB product may itself not be defined. So, first thing is it has to be a square matrix, same order. Plus, if B is the inverse of A, that implies A is the inverse of B. Because so if I say B is equal to A inverse, then I can say that B inverse is all to A. There's a theorem on uniqueness of inverse. If inverse of a square matrix exists, then it is unique. That means for a square matrix, there can be only one inverse. That means for one square matrix A, you can't have two A inverse. A inverse has to be unique. There will have to be only one inverse of a square matrix. It is unique. There can't be two unique inverse of a square matrix. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.